Hey YouTube, Jake Kilroy here back in the shop. We're gonna finish up the coil winder project. Quickie little project that I started a while back that we're now going to finish. And before we get started, uh, some new stuff in the shop, not the tape measure. Um, James Dedman sent me, I'll post a link to his channel down below, sent me this uh, oil cup that he made from a, some of the brand, a Melissa and Doug paint cup for kids. Comes with this funnel here, and then he added these PVC pieces to it, and it functions like a, um, one of the no spill cups. He's seen me looking around for them. Um, and uh, he felt bad that I was having to look around the shop for my no spill cup. I hate to tell him I got like five. <laughs> and I'm still looking around for it. Anyway, um, he said that these, he sent me a brush too. He said that these are about one third the price of the, um, of the you know, ones you buy. So anyway, I'm looking forward to giving this a shot. The other thing I like about it is you can see what's in it. One of the things about the spill rights is they, uh, whatever, they, whatever they're called, you can't tell what's in there. I always end up picking up one that's empty. So I've got five, four of them are probably empty. And so anyway, uh, that's pretty nice. Uh, thank you very much, James. Appreciate it. Link to James' channel below. Um, go check him out. Uh, what else we got? Oh. So I was in an antique store around the corner. Got a little Tom Lipton appreciation here. He will like this. I was in an antique store on the corner. There's an antique store in Vicksburg, if you're ever in Vicksburg. And um, on uh, Washington Street. And they have a great deal of uh, tools. That's right. Hammers. It looks like Tom Lipton shot when you go up in there. There's so many hammers. Hammers. Planes, plumb bobs. You a collector of antique plumb bobs? Man's got it. Um, what other types of tools? Hand saws, old school hand saws. Um, so there, there's a lot of nice stuff. I may have, <coughs> I'm, I'll, I'll wander on down there and take some pictures and then post them um, on. Um, in my next video. Um, as far as hammers go, tons of antique, contemporary, quasi-antique hammers of all types. Cobbler's hammers, nail hammers, framing hammers, cabinet trim carpenter hammers, and I mean, ball-peen hammers. This bad boy here. This is a... Um, he said, the guy that owns the shop said it's a beryllium hammer, kind of like Amco maybe um, makes beryllium or aluminum bronze. But it's made by a British hammer company, tool company named Thor Hammer Company. Here, check this out. I don't know if that'll focus. Um, really neat, uh, beautiful hammer. Um, I would suspect not that old. I uh, got some nice patina. Um, it's definitely hard. It's much harder than, than a lead hammer, anyway. Um, 25 bucks, right? So, new, a good beryllium or bronze hammer is going to cost you this size, going to cost you $75. Uh, so, that's, that's cool. Um, I, like I said, I'll go down and take some pictures and post some pics. Uh, what else we got? Oh. Um, Little um, eBay find here for I think nine dollars. I paid for this. Weld on, brand new, one and a quarter diameter, three flute. Um, very nice. So sharp, never been used. I had some more stuff. Hold on a second, I'll be right back. Okay, so I got a letter from Tom Knott of. Charlotte, North Carolina. He is a uh, YouTuber as well. 
um, Hilltop Machine Works. His little I'm on YouTube card, and he sent me a business card, and he sent me a sticker. So we're gonna add Hilltop Machine Works to the uh, I don't know if one of those kind of stickers, huh? Tom, you got stickers for young people. All right. Let's see. Not too big. One block. There. Right. right in between my Alaska sticker and my uh, Bar Z sticker. So, Tom. You have joined the um, you have joined the crowd. Um, look for Tom on YouTube, Hilltop Machine, and um, uh, check him out. So, anyway, if you remember a while back, it's been a while. I don't even remember. Um, I was working on building a coil winding attachment or tool holder. I guess you'd say. For my, my lathe here, and as you can tell in the back, we're going. Um, didn't really plan well the first time, and uh, what I thought about doing was just having a long bar going through a boring bar holder with the spool of wire stuck on it. Once you do that, there wasn't any room for the workpiece. The workpiece in this case being a six inch uh, Schedule 80. CPVC pipe, which is kind of fat, and a six inch pipe size, and it didn't fit. So we've had to make some changes to make it work. Um, I wind a coil on this six inch piece of pipe for a product that I make, and um, it performs the function of being a non-contact proximity switch. Um, it's, it's a capacitance setup, basically. So. I'm going to, I've been winding this stuff previously just by grabbing a screwdriver, putting the roll of wire on it, starting the lathe and just kind of, you know, manually, and it doesn't seem to affect function, but I would really like to be able to do something a little more controlled and repeatable for obvious reasons. So let me move the camera around. And we'll check out the changes that I made to the coil winder uh, in order to work in this application. This is the revised coil winder. Originally I had a 5 8 inch shaft to hold this spool with a half inch extension of about 5 inches that went through a, a BXA boring bar holder. And I anticipated setting it perpendicular with the ways of the lathe on the front here and just having the spool. But what I didn't, I didn't really calculate my distances. There's only about two inches there. And obviously this isn't gonna fit uh, with the block and all this other stuff. So that didn't work. So what I did was I created this little piece of, took this piece of angle, cut it down, uh, shaped it down to fit this 5 8 inch uh, tool holder, that's the, that's the height on a BXA, standard BXA holder. Then I uh, drilled a 5 8 inch, I mean a half inch hole, half inch passage hole through the top back of this block to space my spool up and back away from the workpiece, which worked out fine. Um, I did not permanently attach this because I thought to myself, you know, this this little attachment, this little piece of angle might come in handy for other uses, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna permanently attach it. That's the reason I bolted it. And then I got this piece of uh, brazing wire with a little loop in it and a little can clamp so I can adjust it for wider or narrower spools to try to center this eye up so that it would steer the wire out. So this is 28 gauge wire, 28 gauge, yeah. uh, 28 gauge is nominally 0 0.0126, 12.6 thou, and 
Uh, I don't want it to lay down wire for wire, so double that is 0.0252, and I have a feed mechanism on here of one of my feed rates is 0 0.0253, so that's close enough. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in neutral. I'm going to lay out some wire here. And just... Tape it on. I just learned something. I gotta get it started on here without any spring pressure. Put a little pressure on it here. Broke a wire. So I'm pretty sure we broke that wire just out of feed pressure. Um, here's learning experience for you. We just had so right here. While the wire is spooling out. The spring's turning this way, and it's unscrewing this nut. Taking the spring turns this way, and this nut is unscrewing this big old monstrous thumb screw here, or thumb nut, to be honest. So what I'm gonna try to do to fix it is uh, is turn it around the other way. Take it off the bottom. That way, the thumb the thumb screw should either be tightened by the rotation of the spring or unaffected. I expect unaffected. So let's take this off and try that again. We're basically going to try no spring pressure at all this time. And we've slowed it down. I put it in second back gear, running about 45 RPM.
we go. Um, when I first, I had uh, piled up a, a little wire here, a couple of uh, wraps of wire to give it some strength before kicking it off. And when I first engaged the feed, the wire didn't really seem to want to move off of this location. There's a definite hump here where there's, uh, where a lot of wraps piled up. And I don't know, I'm not really sure why that is. I don't, I don't know if I need to get my eye closer so that this distance uh, of wire feeding from the eye down to the actual workpiece is shorter. Um, but this is probably workable right here. This will work fine. Um, once I had some, re once I applied a little more pressure with my hand onto the wire, it, it seemed to start feeding quite nicely. So um, this is kind of what I would expect in here. These pieces, the, these wider sections here, I don't know why we're getting such a variation. I think it's because of this this distance right here is too long. I need to create, I need to make an eye that's much closer to the workpiece. All right, so huge strides. I mean, at least it is functional. A little oil in Mr. Dedman's oil cup. Ooh, test. Yeah, it works. Um, we're going to do a video on the uh, rod bender next, so look for that next few days. I'm uh, making some more progress on that project and uh, keep things rolling around here. Hopefully everybody's getting ready for the bash this year. I know I certainly am and um, stay safe in the shop and I'll talk to you soon.